Sometimes, spherification can seem really hard and daunting, but do you know that it's actually super easy to make these delicious looking cocktail pods? And today on WTF, we're going to show you six different recipes that you can turn into cocktail pods. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And if you're tuning in to WTF for the very first time, or if you've been watching for a while and you haven't already subscribed and rung the bell, you really must do that because you want to be make sure that you're going to be notified of our content. It comes out every single Tuesday and we're always doing something kind of fun and exciting and different in the kitchen. So make sure you do all that so you can get notified. Now, um, a few weeks ago, Scott and I did an episode where we covered a uh, mulled wine cocktail pod. Yes. <laughs> and people really, really loved it because it's spherification, but it's kind of like bigger and more exciting and different. So um, because it's, there's so much interest in it, we decided we're going to do an entire episode all about different ways that you can turn this simple technique into really fun and entertaining ideas for your party, get together, like, you know, or a catering event. So whatever it might be. So. This episode is all about cocktail pods. Scott, um, do we want to start with the demo or do we want to start with a little bit about spherification for anyone who hasn't already we checked it out before? We should start about spherification because okay. if this is uh, your first time tuning in and you don't know about spherification, some of this won't make any sense to you. So there let's you start there. Mm -hmm. uh, what this is is called reverse spherification and to be more specific, it's frozen reverse spherification, which is probably the easiest kind of entry gateway into spherification because mm -hmm. it's the most forgiving type. Uh, what we have here is a, a cocktail that we made. It is slightly diluted so that uh, the whole process will work, but mm -hmm. uh, cocktails are generally diluted with ice and everything in them, so you don't have to worry about it not being you know, flavorful or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we add a little bit of calcium. This calcium is called calcium lactate gluconate. It is a completely flavorless calcium. We add a little bit of that to the cocktail. It doesn't change the cocktail. It tastes exactly how you want it to taste. It just now has a little bit of calcium. And the reason why we have calcium is that we make a setting bath. And this setting bath has sodium alginate. In this case, it's perfected sodium alginate. And we're going to talk a little bit after we do the demo on why we use perfected sodium alginate as right. opposed to just regular sodium alginate. And what happens is when you put that cocktail pod in, uh, as it hits, it'll start to melt. So they start as ice cubes, and as they start to melt, that calcium will start grabbing on to the sodium alginate and almost creates a network, and mm -hmm. that network spherifies that liquid. So we let it sit in there for about two to four minutes, depending on you know, how warm the liquid is, how long it takes your ice cube to melt, um, and many different variables for, for this at around 125 degrees. It takes about two minutes, which is ideal, what you want. Okay. Anything longer than that, you're going to get a uh, thicker skin because as it pulls out that calcium, it won't stop. Mm -hmm. It loves it so much, it keeps pulling it out and you'll get a thicker and thicker and thicker gel. So we want to have it to the point where when you place it in your mouth and you pop it, that little gel film on the outside isn't, um, isn't getting in the way, isn't you know becoming unpleasant or anything like right. that. You just want it to barely hold in that liquid so you get that rush of cocktail flavor and really impress your friends, guests, whatever it happens to be. So let's get one in there really quick. And I have some sodium alginate, the perfected sodium alginate setting bath here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pop in one. It's very simple. These just wear right in my uh, normal freezer. If you don't want a one ounce size and you want like a half ounce, you can use our uh, molds that we have at modernistpantry.com. Mm -hmm. They're the hemispherical molds, which is just like a half sphere. And you fill them up and they'll be perfect, you know, like half ounce molds. These are about 28 grams. Now, one thing you want to watch with this is that sometimes it'll float to the top just because it does have alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. So I like to just, just baste a little bit. And also, if your freezer is running very cold, sometimes it is so cold that it'll freeze a little bit on the outside. So there's a little tips with this because this is a larger uh, ice cube than you would see with like the little hemispherical molds. Mm -hmm. So just give this a moment. And one thing that we found with all these cocktail pods is they generally have a little bubble on the inside and that's totally fine. The only things you want to watch out for is if you put them in there with too many, they can adhere together, right. which you don't want. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you put them in there and you start, you know, whipping up and, and looking at it and touching it, you could poke a little hole. Mm -hmm. And when that hole pokes, it 
releases a bunch of the liquid, and then you have a tail on your pod, which is you can eventually cover up, but you don't want that. You want it to be nice and perfect. So just a little swirl, base the top gently, and you're good. A pod about this size, you can do maybe three. Just keep them going one, you know, one by one. When one comes out, place a new one in. Mm -hmm. Don't overcrowd. All right, so let's make this cocktail. Mm -hmm. So this cocktail is an Empress Gin cocktail, which is like a blue gin. It's uh, fortified with different you know, uh, spices, so it has a really intense, mm. beautiful flavor, and it is an amazing color. So let's start mm. with our gin. So we have our gin here, mm -hmm. right? And this is just a cocktail. So our gin here, very blue, and there's gonna be something amazing that happens, which you'll probably see in the overhead, is we're going to add in our uh, ginger simple syrup. So it's basically simple syrup, and you just simmer it with some ginger. So you get a beautiful flavor. You can see the color is starting to change. When I added that, it got really deep blue. Mm -hmm. Then I have a little bit of salt because we wanted to bring out those flavors. Not that it's not enough salt to make it savory, right? Right. It's just enough to really enhance those flavors. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually going to do the lemon juice now. So when I added in this lemon juice, you'll be able to see. And we made an Instagram video about this too because this is a really cool thing. When you add in this lemon juice and you mix it up. Ooh, now you have like a, a beautiful kind of lavender color. Mm -hmm. And the calcium lactate gluconate, I can just sprinkle right in, mix it in. If you wanted to place this into a blender, you could absolutely place it into a blender, mix it up. But it's very simple. So we have this cocktail here. And like we said before, we want to dilute it a little bit, but we wanted to show you how to make the base cocktail. Mm -hmm. You can add uh, water to this. I bet it's uh, about two times the amount of water to this cocktail because it's a very strong cocktail at this point mm -hmm. and alcohol doesn't freeze so well. So, <laughs> so we're just going to show you, basically, if you were to dilute this, you put it in to your, you know, normal ice cube tray, fill it about nine tenths of the way up to the top and place it into your freezer. So let's place this off to the side. Yeah, and that lo took literally no time at all. But when you kind of come out and you're, if you're plating like all these fun little pods, people are going to be like, oh my God, how much time did you spend exactly. on this? It's going to be very little time. So let's mm -hmm. take out our pod now. Very simple. Mm -hmm. We have our Empress Gin cocktail. You can see the color is just slightly lighter. That's from the dilution, but it's still a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Right? And we have it right here. Now what you want to do is just pat the bottom with some paper towels or usually I have a little station set up here. We can just you know, take it off, place it onto the paper towels. Now if you wanted to make these ahead of time and say you are having a dinner party and you're going to be running around the whole time, you can make this cocktail or you can make this uh, alcohol pod and then place it back into the cocktail. So if I were to take this pod, I could place it back directly into this cocktail. Mm -hmm. You don't want to hold this in water. You want to hold it in the flavorful liquid that it is made from. If you were to place this in water, uh, our friend Osmosis would, you know, take the water from the outside and it would eventually e even out and you have an extremely diluted alcohol pod and nobody wants that. Yeah, right? and just real quick for people who have not done spherification before, uh, what is this liquid that you just put it into? Good question. Mm -hmm. This is just plain water. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not distilled or anything. And actually okay. that's a good um, topic to touch is when we did the perfected sodium alginate, we placed it into distilled water because sometimes through our faucet, uh, that water contains calcium naturally. You know, if you have well water or city water, whatever happens, mm -hmm. uh, that water could contain calcium. And as we know, calcium and sodium alginate love each other and they create a gel. Mm -hmm. So use distilled water. And this here is just tap water that is cool. So I can literally rinse any excess off the outside. Do you know that if you take a ton of these out at once, say you're making a big, you know, container of them mm -hmm. and they go in here. If there's any on the outside that is not completely rinsed off, they will stick together just because if they're touching, they will eventually stick. So I just like to rinse and get it out into my secondary container. That's the best way to do it. So we're going to show just like a quick demo and then we can talk about all the recipes that Yay. we have okay. here. So, so simply we have a perfected sodium alginate and a regular sodium alginate. And the reason why Perfected works better is that it's partially hydrated. And what that means is that it was once hydrated, it's dehydrated again, and it allows you to mix in easier. And we'll see exactly why. So let me grab a whisk here. So we'll just do, yeah, we'll do Perfected first because it's not going to ruin my whisk. Mm -hmm. So when I do this, if I just sprinkle it on in, you can notice that it breaks up 
it doesn't clump and it'll go down right and the big thing to note is that there's very little stuck to my whisk there's a few little globs there but that's totally fine and this will eventually hydrate within the hour mm -hmm. right now with regular sodium alginate when I add regular sodium alginate to water, this is going to take about 24 hours to fully hydrate. And as I pour it in here, you'll notice the clumping is uh, very quick and it yep. will, right, and much larger. Mm -hmm. And you can absolutely see. Yeah, typically I think if people are using red regular sodium alginate, we recommend you use like an immersion blender yes, or something. Yes, exactly. Because the, with the whisk, it's, it <coughs> might not hydrate at all. With the whisk, you can do all. the perfected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but with the regular sodium alginate, don't try and do it with the whisk because these clumps will almost never fully hydrate. Mm -hmm. uh, it almost encapsulates itself. It's a, it's a weird way of doing spherification. <laughs> you don't really want to eat that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do suggest um, like a full stand blender, immersion blender, put it in, uh, put your liquid in, get it like a vortex going and mm -hmm. then slowly sprinkle it in. Uh, it will work if you want to do it ahead of time. You can do regular sodium algae if that is what you have. But if you have perfected, this is going to work a lot faster. So you, it yep. only takes about an hour to fully hydrate. Yeah. And when you talk about like dilution and maybe we'll cover this when you go into the recipes, um, because alcohol has so many different proofs, is there kind of like a set point that you should try to dilute to? So we do about a two to one ratio of water to the cocktail. Mm -hmm. uh, the cocktail that we make are usually, you know, two to one alcohol to water. Mm -hmm. So we really want to, you know, have a, a really flavorful base cocktail that if you do dilute it, it is still delicious. It is still wonderful and it's still a cocktail. It's not a water re cocktail or anything like right. that. Mm -hmm. So some of them here, like the, uh, the cosmopolitan that we have that's usually you know straight up vodka and a little bit of cranberry mm -hmm. this is a little bit more diluted but you get all those flavors still and especially you know how you garnish it and how you serve it is going to help a lot too Ooh. if you find that you want a cocktail uh, pod to be really you know a bit more alcoholic what we do suggest is if you have like a serving spoon you can then put a little bit of the alcohol in the bottom place the cocktail mm -hmm. pod on top and as you eat it you'll get more of that, the more of that um, alcohol flavor in the cocktail. Hmm, that's a good idea. So we do have a few different cocktails here that we made. Like we said, we have the Empress Gin cocktail. Um, the one that is blue is a uh, blue curacao, like a blue margarita, and we sprinkled a little bit of gray salt Ooh. on top of it. So when you taste it, you'll get that salty rush, and then the cocktail will hit. Then we have here is a Midori Sour, so a nice Midori Sour served with some of the... Uh, um, honeydew melon. Mm -hmm. This here is a tequila sunrise. Ooh. We put grenadine in the cocktail, but then we also put a little bit on the side. So this plate is beautiful for it. And you can scoop it out with a spoon. The, all of these you can actually lift up if you really wanted to and eat them like that, like we did in our uh, mold wine sphere episode. Mm -hmm. For New Year's Eve. Yes, for New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. uh, this here is a pina colada. Ooh. And we made the pina colada and we used the uh, coconut cream. And we actually found that we really liked the separation after so it went in completely emulsified but after we made the cocktail there was a separation so it's lighter at the bottom and you get oh, all yeah. that nice mm -hmm. coconut fat at top and we really like how that actually looked after we made it because we were testing out trying to do like a layered one and we found that this one actually made a layered one on its own hmm. so we didn't you know we didn't want to add an emulsifier to it we just let it do its thing and it separated on its own and it looks really beautiful really kind of eye-catching uh, so those are all the cocktails that we uh, we made. And if you want to try one, Janie, go right ahead. All right. I really love <laughs> all the color and presentation and all these are so unusual. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard to believe that you can pick it up with your hands, but we actually did it last time. I'm, I'm not going to try to like... I'll pick this one up. All right. I'm going to eat this one off the spoon. So very I'm simply, if you want to serve it, like with this one, we would suggest eating with your hand and then eating you know some of the pineapple itself. So I'll be able to pick What's it up. What's this on top? That is just some cranberry thinly sliced. Cool. delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. It's super yummy and it's just a really fun thing to do. And you know what, if you're like not into alcohol pods, yep. you certainly can do this with non-alcoholic liquids as yeah, well. Yeah, it's actually a little bit easier mm -hmm. because <laughs> you don't have to dilute it or anything. So yeah, yeah you don't have to worry about the, um, the alcohol stopping the freezing process. So. Cool. So all these recipes will be available on our blog, blog.modernistpantry.com, and all the links will be in the description below so you can get 
each one of these recipes because I think because they're different cocktails, they'll just be slightly different, but the base concept will be the same. And you mm -hmm. can certainly design all your own cocktails and drinks as well. So it's a really fun thing to do. Um, and th as you can see here, like you can get really, really creative with it. Yes. So are there any final, maybe like I would say, um, Maybe common some. common little things that people look for when they yeah, do when they start with certification they go oh you know like I follow her too. steps. <laughs> there's a lot of steps mm -hmm. to it. There's mm -hmm. a lot of little things. Like we said, this is the most forgiving way to do certification. Mm -hmm. Frozen reverse. You don't have to worry about uh, placing a uh, a liquid directly into the water. You're placing in the ice cube, which will mm -hmm. then turn into a liquid. It's going to be very easy. Uh, if you wanted to make a cocktail pod using um, just a tablespoon and the, the cocktail itself, it's going to be very difficult. You mm -hmm. could do it, but it's going to take a lot of practice. Yep. That's why we wanted to show you this way. It's mm -hmm. going to be the easiest way and probably the most, uh, the least time consuming. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to do it. With your sodium alginate, make sure it's hydrated. Make sure it's mixed in properly. Uh, you can already see that this is you know coming together really well. It just needs a few more whisks and it should be ready within the hour. Mm -hmm. If you do something like uh, you end up with something that is so completely gelled on the top like yep. this, mm -hmm. maybe you want to start over because even putting that directly into a blender is gonna it's gonna take a lot of uh, shearing to get it back to where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And using a flavorless calcium like calcium lactate gluconate. Don't put calcium chloride directly into your uh, your cocktail or else it's going to taste uh, bitter and no mm -hmm. one's going to like that. So yep. just use like um, a flavorless calcium like calcium lactate gluconate. Cool. So great tips. Um, wonderful, wonderful, really pretty colors. And if you do give this a try, you know, make sure you tag us on social media at Modernist Pantry because we like seeing what you come up with because a lot of times it's some really cool stuff and uh, we, we really enjoy seeing that. And of course, if you have any questions about spherification, any comments, leave them below. We do like to hear from you and you can also get more spherification recipes as well on our blog, blog.modernistpantry.com. Mm -hmm. So give it a shot and let us know what you think. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garen. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. And if you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. Mm -hmm.